Hello, Dr. Wilmer and guests. I am going to speak about the area I know a little about, and that's the area of sound and closeness. And uh, it's interesting. We, we had our earliest contacts with sound rather than visual. The sound of our mother's heartbeat of our own heartbeat, the sound of speech through, you might say, bone and water conduction uh, to the uh, unborn infant, uh, and we could hear the sounds of body sounds and things like that. And then even after we were born, uh, we had our first involvement with sound, and here's Bob Landers. Uh, one of the top announcers who really understands a lot about sound, talking about it. Long before you as a child, long before you could tell the difference between a smile and a frown, you could tell the difference in the sound of a word, in the sound of love, the sound of anger, and the sound of impatience. And you learned those sounds before your eyes were ever discriminating enough to know a facial expression and recognize it. Pleasure and pain were evidenced by you as sounds. And you didn't know what a face looked like when it felt these things. So even now, when you hear a sound, its meaning to you is more profound because you have a greater history of hearing sounds than of making sense out of sight. You know, when I was young, we had a, a family whistle if we were looking for a member of the family in a crowd, we wanted to get in contact with them. Uh, if we were lost in a crowd, we could use this family whistle. And here's my mother. Uh, well, first off, here's the family whistle. Now, that was a whistle that my father brought with him from Romania. It's what they used in Romania when he was a child. And here's my mother telling about how she and my father would use this at a place like uh, Madison Square Garden if they lost uh, contact with each other. Well, I remember one time at Madison Square Garden, I couldn't reach my husband. I started to whistle. He had no idea where I was. I started to whistle, and then he started to whistle, and then we made for each other and eventually reached each other. When I was young, I remember many expressions that my mother used to say or uh, thoughts she used to say. And here was one that I remember that I recorded back in the 1940s when I started recording and I asked her to tell it to me. If a task is once begun, never leave it till it's done. Be the labor great or small, do it well or not at all. And my mother had other expressions that she would use and bits of philosophy that I'd hear, and here was something I always remembered. I always had the feeling that if you don't hate right where you are, that'll cut down the uh, amount of hate in the world. You know, before recording came along, we used to have photographs, family albums, and, uh, uh, you know, you would see your grandfather's picture that you remembered from, and you remembered your grandfather from when you were a child and uh, you would feel close to him because of that. But with sound coming along, I found that sound made me feel much closer when I hear it than uh, the black and white still photo did. And here's my father just telling about uh, his moving to the Lower East Side when he was a child and how they got along. Typical tenement house in the Lower East Side uh, in, the two, in the three or four room apartment, and there were 11, 11 of us, and they were pretty well crowded, but 
But we managed as immigrants to to make things do. And my older sisters and brothers immediately went to work and the little that they earned multiplied by four or five that worked uh, provided enough money to keep us going. And here's a uh, nurse from the Abraham Lincoln Brigade in the Spanish Civil War telling a comment of hers about the feelings towards people and closeness. There's something very emotional. There's something very powerful when you find a way to connect with people, with their concerns, with their needs, and you speak that common language. It is powerful. It's a, uh, it's a reason for living. And here's a friend of mine telling me uh, about what makes him feel close. When I think of the word closeness and what the word closeness means to me, I first think about being close to someone and having them tell me something private or personal. But really what it means to me is to have the freedom to express what is hard for me to say to them. So, for example, I feel closest to the people who I can say difficult things about myself to, my fears, my insecurities, what it is that makes me feel uncomfortable. To have that freedom to be able to express myself and how I feel is what makes me feel close to someone else. You know, the telephone has enabled us to feel close to people in many, many ways. And uh, it's been a fantastic instrument in terms of interpersonal communication. And here's a, uh, a very unusual example. My mother in her older years uh, was emotionally sick and at times uh, she'd run away from home and one time she ran to Atlantic City and she was calling me from the 19th floor of a hotel and threatening to jump out of the window and she said I want to jump out of this window I just leaned forward a little it's all ready for me call I'll call it the grand splash in my mind. Now that's what she said. I was on the phone with her and I kept her on the phone and I had someone call the police on another phone and they came and, and, and stopped her while I was still on the phone. But here's just the, the, uh, the moment of the words that I just said. What do you uh, want to do? I want to jump out of this window. I just lean forward a little. Yeah. Well, the telephone has been a wonderful thing in uh, ability to feel close. Years ago, when people would travel around the, uh, the country in the covered wagons, it would be months or years before you could speak to someone or hear somebody, or uh, hear from somebody. I mean, you couldn't speak to them. You could only hear from them in letters, and uh, the letters weren't as close as a phone call. Just recently, on my birthday, uh, this summer in August, both of my children were in France. And uh, 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 actually, my son went to Switzerland on my birthday, and here he's calling me from Switzerland. Hi, Anton. Hi, Dad. How are you? Fine. Where are you? I'm in San Marco Hedenberg in Switzerland. It's beautiful here. Listen, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I can talk to you. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to speak to you wherever you are. It's it's just so wonderful. Yeah, it's true. I wish you were here, though. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And here's a call I got the same day from my daughter. Hi, Dad. How are you? Fine, fine. How are you? I'm really fine. Listen, I won't spend too much time because I'm calling from Paris, but... I just want to wish you a really happy birthday, and I just wish I could be there in person, but I'm on the phone. Thank you, sweetheart, so much. It's so nice of you to call. Oh, you're welcome. I really miss you a lot. Same here. We'll see each other soon, though, but it's so nice to be able to hear your voice. 
Yeah, yours too. Okay, I love you, Dad. Okay, so long, sweetheart. Well, the phone is a fantastic instrument for feeling close. And uh, we call our children in France or in, in my son in, uh, in uh, California, and he could call me one minute after the earthquake and tell me he was okay. And it made us feel so much better. We were so relieved. And uh, uh, here is an ad that the phone company put out. You know, over the years they've had the uh, slogan, long distance is the next best thing to being there. And here's a, a uh, commercial that I just heard recently where they're even speaking of closeness. And here's how they illustrate it. AT&T, may I help you? I'd like to make a collect call from Tracy. Sure, I can. I have my AT&T card, but I've heard that if someone really loves you, he'll accept a collect call from you. I see. It's okay if he doesn't. Hello? Collect call from Tracy. Will you accept charges? Well, sure. There you go, Tracy. And thanks for using AT&T. Trace, wow. Whenever you need a helping hand, you can count on AT&T. We take you right there and keep you this close. AT&T, the right choice. You know, here's a conversation I had with a friend of mine the other day uh, as we were going to work with each other and recording. Hi, Bob. Hi. How, how's Carol today? Oh, she's okay. She was sick, but she's a lot better. How's Rena? Uh, Rena's fine. She's fine. She's good. You know, one of the things when I'm recording in a studio, and there's only a window between me and the director, do you know one of the first things the director says is, uh, Bob, the first thing he does is acknowledge the window by going, uh, Bob, through the talkback amplifier. If he were right next to me, he'd say, Bob, let's look at page three here. But he goes, uh, Bob, and the only thing that forces him to do that is a pane of glass. Imagine the concessions we make to 3,000 miles of separation in our communications. Yeah. Bob, let's look at this uh, point here on the script. Oh, Okay. You know, Bob said, imagine the con uh, concessions we make to 3,000 miles of separation. Well, you may not have known, but when we were talking to each other, we were actually 3,000 miles apart. He's in near San Diego in California, and I'm here in Manhattan in New York. And we have a, you might say, the longest mic cable in the world. Uh, it goes up. 22,500 miles up to a satellite and down 22,000 miles uh, to a satellite here in New York. And uh, we can both speak to each other on satellite, as we were doing here. That was a recording made of our actual conversation where we are both 3,000 miles apart from each other and we're talking over a line that is or a uh, distance, uh, it's uh, satellite connection, and it's uh, 45,000 miles, and you can see how close we could feel. Now, uh, there are futures coming in terms of closeness. Uh, one thing that uh, we use in our family, and I use it with Bob and with uh, uh, other friends in other parts of the world and other parts of the country, is the picture phone and I'd like you to see right over here the uh, picture I have of uh, my son here's w what it looks like this is the Mitsubishi phone there are a number of them uh, this is called the Visitel and it works on the regular telephone line and you can see a picture every few seconds you can change it and uh, uh, there are still pictures but it gives you a real sense of closeness. My son can show me his new haircut or, uh, you know, just seeing him when we're talking to him is, it just can make you feel so close. And uh, you can come back to me on this. There are new things coming along. Firstly, videotape can make you feel close. Uh, we used to send recordings, which 
are easier to send and easier to make, uh, you know, audio recordings on cassette and reel-to-reel. But with the uh, video cassette recorder and the video camcorder, you can make tapes and send them of uh, your children, of yourself, uh, of things you are doing, uh, and they can give you a much closer sense of being together. It's not as immediate as the telephone is, but uh, they give you a fuller warmth and fuller feeling than the recording alone of, say, my father or mother. If I had them close up talking and speaking to you, uh, it would, uh, on videotape, it would give me a much closer feeling, I think, than the sound alone. So there's a hierarchy of closeness with these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, media that help you feel close. Uh, there's something coming along that will probably kill a lot of the airline travel. When they get the hologram working, you will be able to have a hologram on your wall that will be like the the wa the wall of another room with the people you're speaking to so you can uh, uh, speak by a satellite and see the people you're speaking to you could conduct office meetings that way and people could see each other and hear each other just as Bob and I were speaking there so there are fantastic things in the future and uh, you might say that media is bringing the world, the people of the world, closer to each other and the individuals uh, closer to each other. And that's a little of what sound can do uh, in relation to closeness or my thoughts on sound and closeness. And I'd like to thank you for listening.